Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily draw an electrical circuit within AutoCAD Electrical using the tools provided. You can see that on the top here I've got a schematic tab. It's the same as normal AutoCAD or AutoCAD Electrical but you have these extra project, schematic, panel and reports tabs specific for AutoCAD Electrical. Okay, so you can see here I've got a uh, four wire bus already drawn. How I drew this bus is I use the multiple bus tool and I've got a spacing of 10 and I use the empty space going vertically and now I'm going to do another one and I'm going to do this time another bus and select four wires again and go OK and I'm going to click on around here and bring it down. You see that it actually steps onto the wires as, it, as you would expect and then the wires are placed on the specific wire layers as you would expect. Okay, so I'm going to now place a four pole um, disconnect switch. So you can see here that my recently used here is populated, but I can go and find them this in my icon menu here. But I'm going to go with a with this one here and pop that down and build it to the right. If I want another fourth pole, all I have to do is copy the third pole and pop it on here. Press enter. Oops. Oops. Drew one up here for some reason. Let's just delete that. Yeah, and then you can see that it's referencing that. I actually just want to link it instead of reference it. So I can use the link button there to get rid of that reference here and hide that tag. There. Okay, so now I want a circuit breaker. I'll do the same thing again. And place a circuit breaker on my circuit here. Build it to the right again. Same situation for the fourth pole. Copy, paste, press enter. So oops, pressing enter is not really the right thing to be doing here. There you go. So I'll just link those two there like that and hide that tag so if I wanted to I could edit the component I could populate it with things like ratings part numbers etc but in this case I'm just showing you the schematic functionality so I'm not too worried about stuff like that but just to show you you know you can do all that kind of thing as well and basically that stores the data in the attributes of the block if for example I wanted to reuse this I could save it to my icon menu so if we go to my icon menu is it quickly here I can uh, go to circuits okay I could copy oops icon menu wizard what we're doing there circuits add a new circuit pick an icon and let's go to pictures here like that and pick a base point then pick a circuit okay so that means if I want to come back to my icon menu now go to my circuits can reuse that circuit time and time again perfect so you can see I dropped those symbols onto my wires and it has broken the wires for me if I decide to scoot that down here it will scoot all the components for me if I tell it to. If I decide and the wires will stretch and reattach themselves. And if I decide to delete, it will delete and the wires will repair themselves. You can see that the number is numerically adjusted. So you can see that's 101 or 0101 and that's 0102. If I wanted to change the rating again right click 
change the rating and accept so that's great now I want to put in motor starter again build it to the right I can copy and paste for the fourth pole <sighs> I'm not sure why this keeps happening let's delete that there we go um, and then link that last one across there and then hide that's perfect so now I want to motor so I'll come back up to motor control three phase motor with the neutral there we go you can see the wires have broken wires are broken and it, or, or stretched and attached themselves to that motor if I wanted to I could then copy that entire circuit and paste it a few times something like that over there press enter and you can see the tags have adjusted accordingly yeah what's quite nice is the multiple insert Oops. If I go to multiple insert here I can specify a terminal with a wire number and we'll just fence through those lines there keep all keep this one even there we go okay keep all don't ask and goes through putting my terminals in there uh, and I want to hide those so it's just hide these attributes here description one there we go you can do the same but this time I picked last time I picked from the icon menu this time I'm going to pick from a master this is my master here and these will be my terminals like that right through there press enter keep all don't ask don't show me the dialog box and you'll see that it drops all my terminals on like so I wanted to I could oops, change this wire type to an external wire type because yeah, it's external to the panel and you can see that I'm told it not to number anything that's an external wire okay and then I can go through like that and there's all my external wires what I'm going to then do is a source arrow on here signal okay so a source arrow is basically don't show me this again an arrow which can take you to the next page oops so I want another source arrow so just refresh this here there we go uh, another source arrow and another one and another one so there's all my source arrows so I can go to another page I've still got other components up here look all right save that create another drawing GWG002 main panel um, control circuit and then electrical schematic sheet zero two yes I want to apply the project defaults 
Yeah, so you can see that when I create a new drawing, all my attributes populate automatically. Now I can go and place another boss from an empty space horizontally. Click 4, go OK. F9 to snap to the grid. Pop that down there, and then we'll place the destination arrows. Oh, I'll tell you what, we'll do that after numbering because I wanted to show you that it picks up the number as well. So quickly number this drawing up. So I'll click Y number, drawing wide. And there we have it. It's numbered my drawing for me and updated my terminals to show the numbers. Okay, in some cases you may want to hide. Again, we can use my attribute hiding tool to show or hide specific attributes. Um, not sure which one we want to hide here, so we'll just go for that. Not that one. Let's just have a quick double click on here. Y number. And this one is terminal. So we just want to hide the Y number one. So we'll go with that. There we have it. They're all hidden up nicely. Okay, so you can see now that the Y numbers are on the end of my source arrows. If I want to sort these out a bit, I could quickly maybe I'll move it here. And maybe I'll align the others with my align tool. Like so. And again, because I've used inline numbering. You can see that the wires break and stretch to meet where required. So I'm going back to my second page now. Destination arrow, project, here's my signal codes. Okay, that. Okay. So it's asking me to change the layer because it sees it's on a different layer. And it does so. And when I retag, it brings the number with it as well. Let's refresh in this database. Then it'll bring the number automatically. If I go show unpaired, you can see that now it only shows me the unpaired signals to help filter that out a bit. You can see now the number's coming automatically because I fresh in the database. So it saves a lot of time with cross-referencing, it's doing it for you. It saves a lot of time with numbering, it's doing that for you. Keeping track of everything. If I draw a Y now on here, I can bring it down like that. Another one on here maybe. Bring it down like that, you can see it's picking up stuff as required got things like what, we got? what can I show you here power supply pop that power supply on there okay and then wanted to change that wire and right click and say actually this is going to be a red one mil okay that you can see it changes if I wanted to do it on the fly you can see I've got wire type there this is going to be blue one mil as required yeah if I place now my motor starter coil somewhere like that I 
can endure a wire going through one to the other. Yeah, and I can then also copy this. Three, four, enter, and it's numbered them up like so. I've got different wiring number schemes for the, the main phases. You can see I can number slightly differently, drawing wide. There we go. Now we've got sheet two. These ones are coming from sheet one, so they're numbered with sheet one. If I go back to sheet one, I can right click, edit, and I can pick the parent, or I can look at the project for a parent. And okay that and what you can see now the cross-reference has been applied okay so we we'll do it across all four and this one okay cross-references cross have been applied there And there, project there. Okay. All right. So that's updated all that. So now they're linked, if I use my surfer, I can go across and say, all right, find me the parent. It takes me straight to the parent, look, and there it is. So if I just scoot this guy a little bit down, you can see that the reference goes across there as well yeah I wanted to I can then align all of those so they're in the same position nice and neatly hang on just task that There we go. And we're just going to run the update there to make sure they're all okay. So that's just updating the cross references to make sure they're in the right place. Okay. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. You can see there's plenty more tools that can be used. We can do things like toggle on or off, make it into a normally closed if you wanted to, or back to a normally open. We can flip it if we decide that actually we want to flip it around the other way or reverse it. You can do that. So there's lots of little helpful tools, and then back again that are there for you to utilize. We can copy Y number. You see specific Y number copied in line there. Slightly different to if it's the main Y number. If you decide you don't want those Y numbers you can quickly delete them. And repairs the line. Okay. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact Mana Machine.
Thanks for watching. Bye.